Hello everyone, Ginger here, welcome back to another pastel painting and we are going to be looking at what I commonly refer to as cow parsley or weeds, um, some people call it Queen Anne's Lace, I don't know if the two are actually the same plant, just related, um, but either way, usually it's where we see it through hedgerows and growing up around bins and other areas, along the sides of roads, pavements, edges of fields, it kind of grows everywhere, but in the right light it is beautiful so um, it's a plant that I kind of feel like yes whilst it's a weed and a highly huge irritant if you try and touch it um, it's still it's still pretty at the end of the day so we're gonna do that today um, I'm using a larger piece this is color fix this is a white piece of color fix uh, from a sample sanded sample pack from Jackson's Arts um, it's just they put a white piece in the pack I don't really usually like working with white so the first thing we're going to do is add um, an underpainting and I'm going to go really dark to come to completely work against the white so the first thing we're going to do is map out where we want some of these flower heads now you can see from this um, reference photo it's quite busy I kind of like that but I also do like um, that we've got some little yellow flowers in there we've got some little blue flowers in there I kind of like that so I think I'm just going to focus on on that my tablet up on, up on my bench. You can't see it, but I can, which is important. So, so let's see, we've got, we've got one here, kind of like that. We've got one here. I'm just gonna Obviously the further away they are, the smaller they'll look, which is fine, but also helped by the fact there's a couple that are just not quite fully open heads, which are pretty as well. A slightly different green, they're kind of more greeny yellow than the kind of creamy greeny white that the flowers actually are. They're kind of like tiny, lots and lots of tiny, tiny little flowers um, all clustered together, so they tend to be like cluster heads. Almost like flying saucers when you do them like this. This one looks like an upturned umbrella here in the corner. I've also got these blue ones. There's a blue one, a spiky one here, another one here. A little grouping of them here. There's another one kind of there, and one hiding in the grasses here. Then we've got this one tiny little cluster of yellow flowers. But um, yeah, I'm going to move that to over here. I will add a few more. So just because I like the contrast that the yellow will bring. This is where I'm going to get a little bit unusual. I'm going to ditch my willow. just got some ink, it is um, college, was it Schmidt, Schmidt College ink for lino printing. Um, it's great because it dries really flat matte, so it's a really good for this sort of thing. And it's a really, really nice kind of dark flat matte black, so you can just about see there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to give ourselves a really nice dark background to work from. Look at that.
thing is with this stuff is because it's ink, um, it takes up almost no tooth whatsoever on the paper. So it still gives us plenty of grit and tooth to play with. For those that have been struggling with uh, too much pastel on the tooth and therefore when you're doing your flowers um, you're struggling to kind of get them on without it going muddy, well this is an excellent way of doing this is because we're not go we're going to be leaving the space where the flowers are um, so that we can, we're going to work around them and then that will still leave tons of tooth. And the flowers just kind of walk. I'm doing this to stop using the flowers because you're not paying attention to what you're doing. In it. It doesn't make it. sound when I'm applying it and that's partly because um, paper with tooth, the sanded tooth, kind of resists because of course where what you can't see at a microscopic kind of level is the pockets of air between the grains that are on the paper um, and of course when you apply water on it traps that air in the grains which is why sometimes you see it looks almost like the paper's waterproof because the um, anything like water or something, when, you, when you've seen me do some of the other um, other end of paintings, it kind of sits and I have to scrub with the brush to get it on. Well that's basically why, is that when you're adding water you're trapping tiny pockets of air in the grains on the paper, which is why it goes almost waterproof like. Now with printing ink, specifically this is lino printing ink, um, you can also do it with Indian ink as well. Is another good one. It's it's kind of it's plant based, um, and it has has an almost gum built into it, and so that it's it's effectively it's stickier. Um, and it, when you then apply it to the paper, like I've done here, notice that it wasn't really it wasn't doing the same thing, and that's because it's forcing the air pockets out as it sticks and it soaks in. So. So um, yeah, it's actually it, it's sometimes good for an underpainting, but um, it's not something I would recommend. The college kind of the student version of some lino printing inks might be good, um, but I hate to say it, layering down pastels you've already got and then adding water or rubbing alcohol is going to be cheaper than obviously doing it this way. Um, but because I do lino printing as well. I obviously have this on hand, so it's kind of handy having these supplies. I'm going to let that dry and then we'll come back to it. Right, that's now dry. So we are going to reinforce with some darks and then start working on the background and then the flowers.
really warm and cozy. Oh, that is there. Ooh, it's kind of plummy colour. Right, let's work with that. Well, the dark, so I kind of want to go light from out here and then dark into the middle. So you're kind of almost framing the picture with what direction we're going in. So that's the greens and, I'm sorry if you guys are bouncing too much, so the greens and purple. are actually the ones I want. brightest colours on top of this.
kind of see see those coming through now. of what it is you want them to look at, the human eye will automatically fill in the rest for you. flat but against there and then just dragging up. much because this is a colder colour so it's not a lot that at all going on. <clears throat> lighter yellowy green like this. Just 
check where that's going. You want broken lines. You know, do not just go, oh, yep, yeah, there's a line there. There isn't. You just want to be able to, to give it, um, you know, some shape that people think, oh, yes, I know what that is. Um, You can kind of see that I'm not really caring where the lines are going, they're just they're going wherever wherever I think this the shape of the plant, the bottom of the plant's ended up. It's kind of what you want really. You don't want <clears throat> you don't want to pre you predefine where your flower heads are, but you don't necessarily want to predefine where the stalks are going. Because that will that'll follow its own path and I think one of the things you've got to pay attention to is that kind of let it because it's more natural and you want that naturalness as part of the painting. Look at that. That's looking pretty cool. Do you want some of this? Lightning, it's really lightning down here. Okay. Now we want to start getting a little bit more. I want to get some of these. Look how vibrant that is. Don't panic, we will mellow those out. Right, now I want to start getting the lighter colours in this. <clears throat> so I'm still, really, have, I am still croaky. So I'll give constant battle to try and get this back down. Oh. The lightest creamy white, slightly creamy white as well. So we want a cooler, 
green white, which I'm going to use this, which is one of my unisons, and then um, more of a yellow white white on top, and you'll see that will give us some of the contrast. So, but. what we're looking for here is just little, just little marks. I'm only giving this. I'm only giving the suggestion of, of the plant. I'm not. I'm not going to do every single tiny little flower head. Or we'll be there all week. So you can see how that's just coming across. I'm just pressing and dragging down ever so slightly. It's good because it's a little short piece of pastel so it's perfect for this. Some of these lighter coloured, um, lighter coloured. I want to keep some of these uh, not with the white on because I want them to be in shadow and in the background. So, Really vibrantly light. This little pop of this kind of more vibrant green going on here.
is like a creamy color. kind of see now these ones and we have ones that are the brightest with the slightly warmer Touches of the blue. Yeah, that's why I wanted that the blue in the end.
Still pops a yellow, not much. Just like that. Might bring some of the bugs. go. Quite like that. What I'll do is scroll my initials in this corner. And that's that. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this painting of the beautiful um, cow parsley in our country and uh, in other places. I think they call it Queen Nan's Lace. Hogweed, which is a similar plant um, and a couple of other different types, but essentially roadside weeds, beautiful roadside weeds. So remember to like and subscribe, join me for another video very soon, and I hope you all enjoyed it. Ta-ta for now.